So, someone asked me to uh, do a review of Joker. And then I thought, yeah, I can do that. And then I noticed that, like, lots of other people were doing reviews for Joker. And then I was like, why did this nigga ask me to do a review for Joker if, it's, like, the, the site's just going to be saturated with it? Like, like no one's going to watch the review. The, the shit's just going to be drowned out by the search results and, and recommended. Like, I don't know. Like, do you know how YouTube works? Probably not. I, I'm not I'm not getting on the guy. Um, but, you know, I saw Joker the other day. And I have to say, um, I don't know, I have some thoughts on it. So where should we start? Let's start from this. A lot of people are in one of two camps. They either praise the movie as a remarkable, remarkable film. Or people are terrified that it is a incel calling con and the incels will... I guess become or oh, will resonate with the Joker and they will kill people and they will feel vindicated by it. I guess you could say I don't, I don't really know, but I do know there's lots of different dumbass articles about incels and Joker and all that, and I intend on chatting about it a little bit. But um, for the most part, I guess the first thing we should do is talk about my thoughts as a, as a movie and then talk about my thoughts as its cultural relevance because the Joker is a very interesting movie and in the fact that it is so incredibly culturally relevant despite the fact that its setting is actually back in the 1980s which it kind of necessitates it has to take place back in the 1980s because we have way too much technology to let the shit that happened in the joker like happen you know so anyway um let's start with it as a movie what's the best thing to say about this film i have to say the joker is a very 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 strong yeah, you know, like, eh, you know, like, it's it's not a bad movie. It's not the best movie, I don't really think. It's a great movie. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed every moment of it. I just kind of left, I just kind of felt, you know, desiring a little bit more. It wasn't really the movie I was hoping it to be, but taking it for what it was, it, it was an excellent character drama. And that's what the Joker is. It's a character drama. The actual story left much to be desired, and there really isn't much of a story apart from a life in the week of Arthur Fleck, or, excuse me, however long the events took place. It is the basic mental breakdown of Arthur Fleck into becoming the Joker, and that is like the entire film. Now, of course, some people are probably going to ask me, was asked, well, what were you expecting? Well, what I was really expecting was like a first heist, um, like a first plan like a first encounter with the batman maybe or maybe they like that being teased i don't i didn't like want him to actually fight the batman at the end of the movie but like i kind of wanted like that to be building up instead it was like a dual origin where we told how arthur fleck became the joker but it also like sprinkled in the easter egg of uh bruce wayne and his origin in there too is now directly inspired by the joker and i just kind of felt like that was totally unnecessary um, the actual story itself is more about Arthur Fleck breaking... Oh, by the way, spoiler. It's about Arthur Fleck's mental state deteriorating over time until he finally starts killing a lot of people. And more than anything else, enjoying the killing of a lot of people. But, like, he doesn't really do it in any, like, clever or even, like, insane or even overly violent way, as a lot of people claim this movie is incredibly violent, when it really isn't. Um, he just, you know, he just kind of caps them, you know? And that, that kind of wasn't really what I was expecting or hoping for in a Joker movie. I kind of wanted to see how his twisted mind would bring him into truly enjoying what he was doing and like truly and like wanting to have society reflect what he thinks, you know, like reflect his chaotic thoughts and reflect his belief. Uh, I think especially like at the end, the killing joke kind of reflects this the most that uh, like everyone's kind of like a bad day away from becoming just like him or that everyone deep down is just like him and we didn't really get that kind of character drama i would have liked to see like arthur fleck trying to show people that like he's not the crazy one that he kind of you know he's he's what everyone is feeling on the inside only like coming out you know and that's not really the joker we got instead we we really did and i'm not saying this to hang with feelings but we really did get like a crazy kind of incel dregs of society type guy who just gets his teeth kicked in 
quite a bit and how he kind of gets sick and tired of it and he, he finally finds the acceptance and reverence that he was looking for in becoming a violent killer and that's not bad you know it, it's not a bad story you know but it, it's not much of a story you know there aren't very many I would say uh, dramatic events that occur or like twists and turns that happen the movie is quite a slow burn the movie does take its time when showing us on um, the one thing that like anyone who even pretends that Joaquin Phoenix did not do a beautiful job acting can fuck right off because that acting was amazing okay if there's anything I can say that the acting was just uh, great I mean that was some that alone dude like he's not gonna win an Oscar but he should win an Oscar. I, I think everyone can universally agree his acting was phenomenal. That was just some just some S plus tier acting, okay? Um and he really like his mannerisms, his his body, um, the the, the the creepy, desperate laugh that he has is so beautiful because it feels so forced you know like it feels uncomfortable you know like, like it really like it, it hits you in your core it's so great like he he does a good job acting um and that laugh is just phenomenal um but i'm yeah, but as much as i love you like the character i think they did a great job of the character and i think they really good it did a good job of, of chipping away at alter fleck as a character and like stacking the deck against him over and over again before it topples over and he you know fully realizes that he's the joker um you know i i i, I think that, that was done well but i still would have kind of wanted to see a more dare i say refined joker actually like doing something or like creating a plan or like trying to you know you know hold a mirror or a crazy mirror up to society's face rather than having a repressed angry joker finally boiling over and you know showing people that he's kind of sick of taking their crap because it's not a bad story it's just not I, I think that that character could have been anyone I think that's kind of the thing that really gets me about it is that um the story doesn't feel like it's unique to the Joker as much as it feels like it is definitely resonates with anyone that can like feels like a dragon society that feels like that gets their teeth kicked in a lot that gets bullied a lot that gets hurt a lot that just you know can't really find a way to win that's just so sad and angry you know I really feel like that this story can it, it definitely plays on that and I think it can resonate with some people's like, darker fantasies when they are in that headspace but as far as it being a unique story to the character of the Joker I have to say meh, not really and that's why the movie is a very strong yeah, the acting is great. The character portrayal is phenomenal, but the story itself is just kind of man. At the end of the day, he ends up he does you know kill what one two three four five six pe seven people. I think it's seven seven people. I mean he kills he does rack up the kill, but it's not him like creating a plan. So uh, I just don't agree with people who just who just are overly in love with this movie. I'm not. I enjoyed it. I thought the acting was phenomenal. He should definitely win an Oscar. It's just not really what I was hoping for. Um, but that's you know thoughts on the Joker. Now um, how I feel. Um, lots of I wouldn't say lots of spoilers, but th there really just isn't much to the movie. You know, it's just it's a week in the life of Arthur Fleck. Like that's that's what it is. You know, there's just just not a lot. I mean, some people are like care about the ending. Some people are confused about the ending. I'm not. The ending seems pretty you know, clear cut to me. Some people are like, does it happen in his mind? Did it actually happen? And I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, they fucking happen. I don't know, like, we literally got, like, flashes of, of, of Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne being killed. Like, yes, like, the events happened. Like, the Joker's not gonna fucking make up randomly that Bruce Wayne's parents were killed, you know? Like, like, he has no connection to Bruce Wayne at this point. Like, Bruce Wayne's not Batman. Like, so, like, yeah, like, this shit happened. It's it's stupid to even be like, oh, here's the ending explained. I'm like, the fuck? Like, it doesn't need to be explained. Like, the shit happened. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I guess more, more to talking about this one thing. One thing that I, I, I can understand why the movie has certainly garnered the attention that it has, has garnered some of the, the criticism that it has, because... Like I said, the movie resonates with the huge growing incel problem. I say I call it an incel problem, but um, this huge fear that society has of incels, and it's a uniquely misplaced fear because incels are, are not the problem of society; they're the symptom. Um, they a symptom of a lot of different issues that have occurred. But people are are terrified, or some people are. The liberal-minded people are terrified 
and incels will watch Joker and resonate with him and feel inspired or feel empowered or emboldened by this character. That somehow this movie is glorifying um, drama and evil. I actually, um, today I was at work and uh, I stopped to check uh, a Snapchat and there's like a couple of things that I read here that just blew my mind. I'll read some of it and I'll post it up here so you guys can see. Um, it says, and, and these are and these are just kind of out of context a little bit, but it goes on the misunderstood victim versus the cold blooded villain. Even as the Joker starts murdering people in cold blood vengeance, the lens still paints his actions as understandable given what he's gone through. And I'm like, All right, what, what the fuck are you talking? I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Like the the movie is, is incredibly un, uncomfortable, and the movie is is incredibly sure to show you like like this is not a good guy. This is not a good person. Um, I think one thing that people seem to not be able to understand, and this is actually one thing I actually do like the Joker movie for. Um, I know I didn't really praise the movie a lot, which kind of makes it sound like I didn't like it, but I do like this. <coughs> Excuse me, is the fact that like Arthur Fleck wasn't born evil. It was something that had to occur over time, and that's usually how bad this not always, but usually how evil like grows in someone's heart is it's not normally something that happens you know on a Saturday afternoon because they you know stepped on a fucking ice block that their little sister left on the floor. You know what I mean? Like it's not that cartoonish Skeletor. I'm just you know I just hate you because I just want to rule the world. Like, it's not normally like that. You know, it's usually something that happens. Excuse me, over time. That builds itself, and I think that that reflection in society, I, I I think, is very important that a lot of people don't take into consideration. And I and I make videos about this all of the time, I say all the time, but like, like a lot of the time, I, I talk about this. Like evil is something that that is stacked upon. Like these these crazy people that go out and kill is it's not normally they just you know hate you, and that does happen. Um, but it's that's just not usually the case. You know, and I and I like the film for for portraying that. However, some people seem to to misunderstand that like giving a reason to something is not the same as making it understandable. It's not the same as justifying it. If someone went out and killed thirty four people because they got raped, you know, by a bunch of gay men, like you're not ever gonna you're you're not gonna say yeah, good on you killing those thirty four people. No. And even if you realize he got raped after a, a whole series of terrible things that happened to him, you're still going to say what he did was wrong. Or at least if you're virtuous, you're still going to say what he did was wrong. You can definitely have empathy. You can definitely understand, you know, how he got here. But being an upright,ous and moral person, you're never going to agree with evil because someone else did some evil. That doesn't mean that you hate the person who committed the atrocity or you don't understand where they came from. You don't. It doesn't even mean you don't want to help them. But like, like an evil action still exists in and of itself you know it doesn't matter if you understand what got them to this point they still did something wrong and again like strong minded people are not gonna like watch a movie and watch something bad happen and be like oh it must be fine because you're going smack them in the face with a bloody sign like you know that's not how normal people operate or, you know that's not how strong people moral character or foundation operate you know and and there's just not i don't think there's enough trust or respect for people's intelligence or an adult's intelligence when i read shit like this i mean i understand thinking that kids are stupid because i've made stupid kids every day like i get it like some kids are dumb but eventually it gets to a point where it's like like come on you can't really be serious about this one dude it goes um after murdering people joker dances down a flight of stairs as a classic rock anthem plays um it gave off a similar vibe to rom-coms when the nerd gets the girl I mean, not really. I think that that just the position of his crazy dancing after what he just committed is exactly what they wanted to go for. And I think that, if anything, made the scene even more eerie. Like, I don't, I don't know how the, how the crispy fuck you got this sounds like the nerd getting the girl out of rom-com. It's like, no, it's like, it's, it's kind of terrifying that he's, that after all this time he's, he killed someone and he's just happy. He's just like, mm, I'm just... Let me just break now. Like that, that, that's, that's terrifying. Like he's so happy he just killed people. Well, I'm next now. Like that's the mindset you get into. I don't really know how he got that. Is it really a vibe we should be striving for? Be, be striving for before and after calculated vengeful homicide? And I think here he just kind of misinterpreted the point of the scene. The point of the scene is to juxtapose his happiness with his heinous actions. And it is supposed to be eerie. I, I think the moviegoers kind of expect you to be a normal fucking human being, you know? <laughs> the fear of glorified film violence. Um, 
So the people in the film who don't find his actions justified are depicted as buffoons or cogs in the machine for Gotham's corrupted government. I, I never really got that vibe. Um, maybe I have to rewatch the film to get that, but I never felt that. We never get any kind of sense at, um, at all this is not something you should be, you should strive to be lending credence to the fears of the 2012 Batman shooting victims family that the film would glorify these types of shootings. And first of all, one, there wasn't even a fucking shooting. Nah, well, I guess he did cap three people, like, in the first act. Um, but dude, it's like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we never get any kind of sense that this is not something you should strive to be. Arthur <sighs> Like, should I even dignify that with a fucking response? Like, your mommy and your daddy or your pa should fucking tell you that killing people is not okay. We get this as children. Like, what are you on about, brother? Y you know what I mean? Like, to get to this point, you have to be willfully ignorant of the fact that people are, like, raised in some point. You know, like, I, I understand the world might be going to shit. I understand that single mothers are raising their children in a very awful and horrendous way. But at the very least, I'm certainly, I can think, I can say with certainty that most people aren't going to watch a film and then say, oh, well, killing must be okay then because a crazy man with clown makeup did it and he's dancing on a sunset strip. <clears throat> like, come on, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it goes to supervillain martyr complex. This whole martyr complex for mass violence stick is a dangerous line to walk. Well, he's not a martyr. He lived. Um, especially given how prevalent gun violence is in the States. The film is a disturbing blueprint for the mentality that if the world is cruel to you, you should burn it down instead of making it better. That's an ill-advised message to be glorifying on film. This nigga says this shit like Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 1 aren't a fucking thing. This guy says this shit like there aren't films regularly coming out with this moral of righteousness. The Joker is a goddamn villain. He's a fucking bad guy. We know he's a bad guy. We know you're not supposed to aspire to be him. We see his actions lead to the creation of someone that will become a hero, which I don't think the movie should have had, but it did have the origins of Bruce Wayne sprinkle in there a little bit. Like, we... Come on, dude. Like, I... And I I think like people who who make who write articles like that or post stuff like that have this this degree of arrogance that they're just levitating above us all they're just so much more intelligent and they're gonna moral fag to you like you can't watch a film and understand that his actions are heinous and terrible and bad and that we can't recognize that he is the villain that's why he gets and even though you have other people who praise him in the film it doesn't mean that what he's doing outside of the film or even what he's doing within the context of the film is a good thing because guess what he just he was being driven off to jail to begin with, we can all recognize that these are heinous things, you know, um, listen, you know, and here's the thing, I guess, a final verdict, final thing I have to say, and maybe I might make another video that maybe, like, more specifically targets another article, because this video is really long by itself, but I have to say this, like, anyone who's, like, terrified that the Joker is going to be, like, some kind of incel calling card is, like, guys, like, Chill the fuck out. First of all, incels are remarkably depressed. Incels are more likely to kill themselves long before they kill other people. And even though you can say, well, what about Elliot Rolinger? What about Ali Manassas? What about all the... You can, you can... Okay. And for every one of those guys, I mean, I can raise you up with all of the different drug dealers that kill people over bad drug trades. I can raise you up with all of the other heinous, terrible things that people do. Evil is a force in this world. It's like being an incel doesn't make you evil. You can be an evil incel as well as much as you can be a good incel. Like evil is the the issue. Evil is the force to be fought. As I've said numerous times, you know, it's it's not you're not going to watch a movie and feel like it's your calling card and resonate with it and then be like, oh, well, let me go get a fucking Magnum 44 and just go shoot. Like, no, you're not going to do that. And and more than anything else, the film itself, if you were paying attention to it, showed that it, it was a slow burn. You know what I mean? It was it's something that happened over, like, Arthur Fleck's life was bad over and over. He wasn't getting anything out of it. You know what I mean? If you really want to stop these incels, if you really are so terrified of these people, you know what you got to do? Kill them with kindness. But you won't. And that's the shit that pisses me off the most about it. But you won't. If people want to fear monger six ways to fucking Sunday. But you want to know how you beat an incel? You want to know how you take them out? Be nice to them. Because that's all they fucking want. If you're that scared of incels, there's your solution. Just be nice to them. With that being said, man, I think you guys got something out of today's video. You probably didn't. But if you did, man, go ahead and click the like button. And shoot, go and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comments below. As always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon.
Adeus.